Welcome to Module 6. In this sixth module, we'll deal with the actual estimation of various spatial regression specifications, and we'll cover a number of very important principles. Uh, this is fairly formal and fairly mathematical, but it's important to get a good sense of the framework that is behind the various um, estimation methods and test statistics. In this first section, uh, will deal with the principles of maximum likelihood. And specifically, we'll go over a number of very important underlying assumptions. First, we'll cover the notion of stationarity, which is a notion of equilibrium, uh, absolutely necessary to carry out cross-sectional analysis. Then we'll move on to the concept of asymptotics, which deals with how the properties of estimators and test statistics change as the sample size moves to infinity, goes to the limit. And then finally, I'll give a brief overview of the principle of maximum likelihood estimation as, as such. So we're starting with stationarity, the notion of stationarity, which we've already discussed a couple of times, is a notion of equilibrium that we absolutely need to be able to do cross-sectional analysis. It's really a way of thinking about the world as a conceptual framework. And as we've already discussed a number of times, when we observe a pattern in a cross-section, a cross-section across multiple locations, we don't actually have multiple observations, but we have a single observation or a single realization, as we call it, of a spatial stochastic process. So you can think of some kind of a mechanism that generates patterns in a systematic way, but has randomness associated with this. And we'll just, we, we're just seeing one possible outcome of many possible outcomes. Now, we, in a computer, we can simulate that, and we've actually already done this when we use permutation analysis for inference, where we recreate a sample of a spatially random process. So each of these samples are slightly different, but they're all basically the same because they all came from the same process. In that case, a spatially random process. The problem is, of course, we don't know what the process is unless we simulate it so the, the problem is, how can we um, deal with the data that we observe as if they were multiple data points? So it's very important to keep in mind the pattern as such is the single data point. What we see as a spatial distribution of data by location is one data point. So we're stuck. So how can we get around that? and still treat it as if they're multiple data points, and we can compute means and standard deviations and things of that nature. And the only way we can do this is by assuming a notion of equilibrium. In other words, things don't change very much, and that's the notion of stationarity. Stationarity, as such, is a very strict requirement. It pertains to the full distribution. It's really an abstract notion because it is not possible to verify it empirically as such. What it means is that the spatial distribution, the uh, probability density of the um, any subset of observations remains the same basically no matter where you are. And the way this is formalized is by using this concept of a spatial shift that we discussed a little bit when we talked about a spatially lagged variable. So spatial shift in abstraction, you can think of a collection of observations, um, a set within the curly brackets, variable z at location s1 all the way to location sk, and then we move these, let's say, in a given direction and by a given distance, and we have a new set of observations at locations S1 plus H to SK plus H. And the requirement of stationarity is that the joint 
density function, the joint probability distribution of these variables is the same. So there is no change of the stochastic nature as we move across the data set. This is very formal, very strict, and impossible to verify. So a weaker, more practical notion is the concept of moment stationarity. And moment stationarity does not pertain to the distribution as a whole, but this pertains to specific moments of the distributions. Moments are characteristics of a distribution, such as a mean, a variance, skewness, and so on. So these can actually be computed from the data. They can be estimated. And the notion of moment stationarity is that the moments do not change, are invariant under a spatial shift. So it's the same idea as before. If we take a subset of the data and we compute the moments and then we move in a particular distance, particular direction, and compute the moments again, then they should be the same. And typically, in order to keep things manageable, this pertains to what is called the lower order moments, the mean, the variance, and the covariance. So the first and the second order moments. Specifically, what it implies for the mean is that there is no spatial trend. So the mean has to be the same. The, re the mean of our random variable has to be the same no matter where we are. Now, most practical applications, there is a spatial trend. Not having a spatial trend is actually not very interesting. So how do we deal with that? We deal with that by taking the trend out. So after we take the trend out, um, we are left with a new random variable that has a constant mean. For example, this is why in computing Moran's i, we take the variable as deviations from the mean. So we take the mean out. The second requirement is a little trickier, is the requirement of a constant variance. So no heteroscedasticity or no variance instability, as we've seen in our discussion of rates and proportions. So that was a motivation, for example, to standardize the rates before we carry out a Moran's eye in the so-called EBI measure that we saw a couple of weeks ago. So again, constant variance across no matter where you are. Then the covariance is a little trickier because the covariance by definition pertains to two different locations. And stationarity for the covariance implies that the strength of the covariance does not depend on where you are, does not depend on absolute location, but is a function of, of distance or neighbor relations, which is what we call relative location, not absolute location. So if we look at the covariance between observations that are, say, five distance units apart from each other, then whether this is in one part of the map or another part of the map, say the north versus the south, it's the same. It should be the same. So, of course, when we discussed earlier the notion of spatial regimes, this is violated by spatial regimes. That's why we consider the regimes separately. So, typically, in a modeling context, these requirements are way too strong for the variable of interest, say, a disease rate or a crime rate or income or house prices, so they really apply to the error term. So we start by modeling the mean in a regression function. If necessary, we model the heteroscedasticity to make sure there is none left. And we make sure that there aren't structural breaks in the uh, nature of the spatial correlation or spatial covariance. And this is typically done in the error term. So that's the first very important notion uh, the concept of stationarity or equilibrium. Uh, in essence, it means that everything remains the same no matter where you are in the spatial data set. So every subset of the data has the same mean, the same variance, and the same spatial covariance. Then another notion which is very important in allowing us to treat 
this single data point of the pattern as if it was multiple observations is the notion of ergodicity. It's again a very complex notion, very formal mathematical uh, requirement. The bottom line is that whether we see one realization of the spatial process or we see all of them, it doesn't matter. It's the same amount of information. And so if you think back of our permutation approach, whether we see one of these random reshuffled maps or we see all of them, it's the same. In other words, the moments that we compute from a single one of these realizations are the same for all possible realizations. So this is an assumption, an assumption about again the stability of the spatial process. So this represent, representativeness of the particular pattern that we observe for multiple patterns. And so then basically this is what allows us to compute um, characteristics of the data as if they were multiple observations, even though there is only one observation of the pattern, the pattern at hand. So to illustrate this, I have a little example where um, I have a 10 by 10 grid and I will uh, generate uh, standard normal variates on that uh, grid. And then just like we have done before when we do permutation analysis, I'll do this five times. And then, so, um, I have five realizations of the same stochastic process. And so now I'm going to make a new data set, taking two rows from the first replication, two from the second, two from the third, two from the fourth, two from the fifth. And so under ergodicity, that doesn't matter, and the new artificial data set has the same information content as each of the five replications separately. And so if you, you know, push this to the extreme, I could have generated 100 replications and taken one data point from each of the 100 replications. And this new artificial data set has the same information content as the 100 op replications. In other words, I can compute a mean and a variance and covariance based on this synthetic data set and it is as if I had done it 100 times, one for each of the separate uh, replications. And so in our example, uh, this looks something like this. We've seen similar maps before when we talked about spatial order correlation. And so in each of these um, six, the one on the bottom right is the original one, uh, and then the others are the uh, generated ones. So we uh, compute the statistics. Um, you know, the one on the on left is not the original one, it's the synthetic one. So we have the five replications, then we have the synthetic one, and basically we see in this summary table that um, the overall properties, even though there's some uh, variability due to the randomness, but the overall properties um, remain roughly the same. So that's the idea of ergodicity, which is a very important requirement, otherwise we'd be stuck. So we have two important core concepts. One is the notion of stationarity, which uh, implies a stability, an equilibrium, so that the properties of our process do not change across the data set. And the second important concept is that of ergodicity, which requires or which implies that we can deal with this one pattern, this single observation on the pattern, as if it was multiple observations from multiple patterns all generated by the same process. So in other words, we can compute statistics 
in the usual fashion by treating each location as a separate observation.